Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. This week I thought it would be nice to show you how I make one of my spring flower arrangements just like this one here and in a minute we'll have a look in the garden and we'll see what foliage is looking nice and which will stand up well in a vase at this time of year, how I condition them and have a look at some of the flowers that we could put in with the arrangement as well. And these arrangements are the kind that go on my garden gate stall here. So I do make larger bouquets as well. Um, but these lovely jar arrangements are perfect if you're going around to dinner at friends or visiting family and you can take them around this and it's already in water. They don't need to do anything with it apart from just enjoy the flowers in their home. And with these jars, my aim is to grow as many varieties of flowers as I can in my garden so that I can put lots of different types of flowers within one arrangement. So I might not have a bouquet or a jar full of just a couple of different flowers. I'll have lots and lots and lots of different ones. So there's lots of interesting things to look at, lots of textures, lots of different colours, lots of different scents as well. So let's go just now and have a little look around the garden and see what we're going to put in a jar like this today. So we're out in the garden and it's a lovely evening and this is quite often when I'll cut my flowers once the girls have settled down for the evening or gone to bed and I'll have time to go around the garden and choose some lovely flowers and foliage to arrange the next day. And I always try and make sure that I condition my flowers overnight, especially for advance orders where I've got plenty of time to plan. And what you're doing there is you're just wanting to cut flowers when the sun's gone down so that they're not stressed, putting them straight into buckets of water, which you then put in a cool dark place overnight. And I put mine in my old stone garage, which works really well for that. And they just get the time then to recover from being cut, to have a big long drink and then they are nice and firm stems and the flowers are recovered all ready for arranging the following morning. The thing that we're trying to do at the moment in terms of foliage for arrangements is going around the garden and looking at what will stand up well in a vase at this time of year because lots of growth is starting to come on the shrubs and trees but it is very new and it will wilt very easy in a vase. So you get to know over time what works well and what doesn't but I'll show you today some of the things that do work well in the springtime for me in a vase. So something that I use a lot of in spring arrangements and throughout the year is raspberry leaf foliage. It stands up really well in a vase. It's got nice sturdy stems to it. And it also provides a really nice framework in my jar arrangements as well. It's got lots of branches, lots of leaves on it to put the flowers in amongst. And this is snowberry and it's another really good foliage. So the raspberry leaf I've been using already for a few weeks. The snowberry I'm just starting to use now. And if you condition it well overnight, it will stand up well in a vase for you as well. Skimia is something that is a workhorse for me. I use it in my Christmas wreaths. I use it throughout my very early spring arrangements and I keep using it throughout the year when I need to. And it stands up really, really well. Out of water, in water, it's just a really brilliant foliage to use. This is something that I've been using a lot of in April. It's Spirea Bridal Wreath. It's very, very pretty. You can use it on its own when it's past flowering for just the leaves, or you can use it in April time, just starting to go into May, um, for its beautiful white flowers as well. So these are the ones that I'm going to be taking some cuttings from today and I try to not take too much from each shrub in the garden so I'm quite selective when I get to the stage where I think I've cut enough. For example a Spirea bridal wreath I have cut quite a bit in April. I want to leave the shrub to recover now and to grow well again throughout the summer so I will change around what I'm cutting from and make sure I don't cut too much from any one plant. Looking ahead into May as well, some things just starting to come now which will be good in the next few weeks. So this lovely white broom will be perfect cut from in a week or so's time. You can just start to see the flowers coming now. And another one that I absolutely love is Raven's Wing. So it's got this lovely brown ferny foliage on it and it will in a week or two's time have these beautiful white flowers too. I've just been trying to extend how many raven's wing plants I have by growing some from a seed and I didn't think it was going to germinate at all but in the springtime I'd left it all autumn and all winter and nothing happened and then in the spring after some cold stratification it has come through for me and I've got some new plants which are doing really well now as seedlings. 
Another one that's going to be really good in the next week or two is going to be Solomon's Seal. That's great. Maybe not so much for jar arrangements because it's really quite large, but in bouquets it looks fabulous. So if you've got some Solomon's Seal in the garden, that's a great one for cutting for foliage and interest in May bouquets. So in the evening I will take round my bucket with me of clean water and I will cut my foliage straight into that. But when I get back down to the house with my bucket full of what I need for my arrangement the next day, I will then do a few things to help with the conditioning. So if I've got any woody stems on them, I will cut about a one inch slit up the stem and that just helps the stem to take up water and recover from cutting. In the past, it was often talked about hammering the bottom of the stems on woody plant material to help with um, taking up water, but this isn't recommended anymore. It can introduce bacteria into the water, it can make the stems decompose much quicker and they are less able to take up water by doing this. So by making a cut, vertical cut up the stem, in that way you're helping maximize how it can take up water. So that's what I do with all my woody stems cut them in the garden straight into water. When I get back to the house, take the stem, cut it at an angle again, and then make a vertical cut up about an inch and place it back in water to condition overnight. So I've just been around the garden and I have cut some gorgeous narcissi and they are looking absolutely beautiful today. Now they have really long stem lengths on them which is perfect for bouquets but because I am doing a little jar arrangement the stems need to be much shorter. And what I'm doing is I'm cutting the stems short, the length that I'm going to need them in my arrangement tomorrow already tonight and I'm putting them in a separate jar of water to condition away from the other flowers. Now the reason that I'm conditioning them at the right length for using tomorrow and in a separate jar of water, not in with the other flowers, is because Narcissi have a sticky sap that will come out the bottom. So when you cut them, you'll probably see this coming out. And this is actually a sap that can be detrimental to the life of other flowers. So if you put it straight in with your tulips, it would mean that the tulips didn't last nearly as long in the vase. So by putting them in separately, all that sap will come out into the water overnight while you condition them and it'll stop leaking sap by the time you use them the following day in your arrangement. So as long as you don't recut those stems when you're arranging, then they'll be absolutely fine to go in with other flowers. But if you found when you were busy making your arrangement and you hadn't quite got your stem length quite right and you did recut it, then the sap will start to come out again. And in that case, you could shorten the life of your flowers. So if you're mixing Narcissi, it's absolutely fine to do that with other flowers, but you have to condition them separately first and you have to have got that stem length right. So I've just been down to the flower patch to gather a few more tulips for arranging and as you can see they have got their bulbs on. So I pull them out of the flower patch, bulb and all, and that gives you the greatest stem length on them. And what I need to do now is I need to go and snip these bulbs off the bottom. Because I'm making the arrangement tomorrow I'm not trying to store them um, with the bulbs on, I don't need to keep them for a number of days. So the bulbs are coming off just now. And I'm also going to strip any leaves that I think will be under the water line um, when I'm conditioning them. So I'm just going to take any extra ones off there. I'll just put those tulips to the side. And I'm going to just take this leaf off just now because that will be under the water line. If you have leaves under the water line and leave them to condition like that, then it just makes the water start to go murky and the flowers will start to decompose quicker. So you're trying to keep that water as clean as possible for the flowers to recover from and take those leaves off. You don't need them when you're flower arranging later on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my tulips in some newspaper overnight. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because tulips keep growing once they have been cut and they bend towards any light that they can find as well. So what you want to do is you want to wrap them in some paper, newspaper is absolutely fine, quite tightly, put them in your bucket of water and then that just allows the stems to stay straight and when you undo the paper tomorrow then they will be really strong straight stems for arranging. 
So I've just taken some of my flowers and foliage out of the stone garage that have been sitting in there conditioning overnight and they're all looking great. It was nice and cool in there last night. And those are some of the tulips that I have wrapped up ready to use. So we've got lots and lots of lovely ingredients to use in our jar arrangements just now. So let's take them inside. So I've got some lovely tulips to use. We've got Pretty Love here. We've got Bell Song, we've got Honeymoon, and we've got Table Dance. So we've got some doubles, we've got some fringed, and we've got some single tulips there. So I've got my recycled jar here ready for arranging, full of clean water. It's got a label on it just so that people can write who it's to and from if they'd like and a ribbon just for a bit of extra decoration. And these Dieweg Bark jars are 7 centimeters wide at the top and they are 14 centimeters deep. So just a good size for a nice arrangement. And here we've got our ingredients. So you can see some Honesty there, our Spirea Bridal Wreath, we've got some Muscari, we've got our nice Raspberry Leaf Foliage there as well. And over here we've got our Narcissi and you've seen the tulips here as well. So we're ready to go. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build a framework with our foliage. So something nice for the flowers to be arranged into. Now here's some of that lovely Raspberry Leaf Foliage and it stands up really well. There's a few extra leaves that are just coming off that additional stem there and they're below the waterline so I'm just going to remove them. And when I am cutting again it won't be exactly the right height your foliage so I will recut the stem and make another vertical slit up it so it can maximise its water uptake in the vase. So I've just popped that one in there. So our raspberry leaf foliage provides a nice starting point but I'm just going to add some snowberry foliage in now and this is quite different to the structured raspberry leaf, it's more airy and light. So I'll just put some in on the right hand side there and we've got another stem here and I'm just going to cut that to size and then slit it vertically again to maximise water uptake and I'll pop that in on the left hand side of the jar too. And I think I'll get some more bits of the snowberry because it's looking quite nice. I'll put some more pieces in around the back and the front. And then after that, I think we'll be able to maybe start adding some flowers as well. I think I'll maybe get a bit more skimmia to put in the centre. So skimmia really is a tough plant to use in your flower arranging. It can stand up really well out of water and in water and it lasts a long, long time in the vase as well. So I'm just going to pop that in the centre there for a bit more structure as well for the flowers. And then we'll add a little bit more snowberry just to finish off our framework there. It's so always good as well just to keep turning your vase around or your jar just so that you can see what it's looking like from the back and see if there's anything that you want to add there rather than just concentrating all the time at the front. So I'm just going to add some of this Spirea bridal wreath in now and it is really really pretty. It flowers for me through the whole of April and it's fantastic in using in bouquets and bridal work then. And also you can use it throughout the year just for its foliage. Its flowers will finish now within the next week but then it will have this gorgeous green foliage as well. And again it's quite eerie, it's like the snowberry, it's quite light flowers and light little um, leaves on it so they look really nice in arrangements. So Honesty is a really pretty flower that you can put in arrangements and it'll flower for you during April, May time and it's similar to Sweet Rocket Hesperus but it comes out before it. And then after Honesty has finished flowering it'll produce these amazing seed pods that you can then use in flower arranging later in the year as well. So Honesty is a biennial which means that you have to sow it from seed in around June time and then plant it out towards the end of the summer and it will overwinter and then produce flowers for you the following year. Honesty doesn't need any special conditioning, just make sure that you've removed all the leaves below the line of the water so that they're not sitting in it and then make sure you've given it a good condition in water overnight so that its stems can recover from being cut. And it comes in white and purple colours and it's got multi-flowers on its stem so some will come out but there'll still be other little buds that will come out a little bit later on as well. So that's some nice white honesty I'm going to pop in there just now in amongst the purple so you get those two lovely colours that work really well together. 
So you might recognize honesty as being called Linaria. And it's really good for growing in shady parts of your garden as well. It doesn't need to be in direct sun. And you'll actually find probably that you'll have little seedlings of honesty popping up. If you've grown it once, it does self-seed and you'll find them all over your garden after that. And um, so they're nice to see as a wildflower at that time of year. And then if you're wanting to sow them in a particular place in your flower beds, then you can sow them in June as that biennial. And I've actually got a video on how to sow biennials. And since we're coming up to that time of year again now, that might be worth a look at. So now we've got that nice framework, I think we're ready to put some tulips in it. I'm going to start off with these lovely white honeymoon fringe tulips. These are some of my favourites and this is the last week for them now. They're narrowly finished for the year. And I'm just going to recut my tulips to size. Now when I'm putting my tulips into the arrangement, I want to keep them quite short on their stems because these tulips will still keep growing upwards and you don't want to have them sticking way out of your jar arrangement when everything else is much lower down. So you just have to think about just putting them in slightly lower than you otherwise would and that works for bouquets as well, especially bridal bouquets. You can make it up maybe the day before and if you haven't tucked the tulips in low enough, then you'll find that they've suddenly grown overnight and they're much taller in the bouquet than you would like them to be. So that's just something to look out for and remember that tulips will grow. So just cut accordingly and maybe make the stems just a little bit on the shorter side for tucking into your arrangements. So you can see there that they're not really above that foliage at the moment, but if you give them uh, overnight, um, they will then have just risen up a little bit and they'll be right at the top of the arrangement and looking really pretty. So we'll just cut another one to size. And the main thing as well is that you don't want to have any foliage down there below the waterline um, because that will mean that it starts to decompose your flower arrangement much faster and you'll um, want to keep it for as long as possible looking really good. I tend to change the water as well every day or two and that just keeps things nice as well, especially if you have mixed in those narcissi. They should have stopped leaking sap, but just to be on the safe side, you can keep changing your water every day. This tulip that we're putting in just now is called Bell Song, and it's a lovely pink fringed tulip. There's quite a few different varieties of fringe tulip that I grow. The ones that are coming out in the garden just now for next week and um, the second week in May are going to be the Curly Sue Burgundy tulips. So these White Honeymoon and Bell Song ones tend to be the very end of April time that they're flowering for me. Every year is a little bit different, it just depends on the weather. They would have been earlier in April this year I think if the weather had been warmer but it's been very cold so the tulips have come out slowly. I think using lots of different varieties of tulips within one arrangement is really pretty. If you just had the one variety, I don't think that that would work as well. It's nice to have different textures and different types of tulips. This one is a double called Table Dance that I'm just going to pop in just now. So it looks like it's maybe more of a single tulip when you first look at it when it buds up, but then over the days you'll find that it opens up and there's more petals inside and it's this lovely pink double one. So I'm just going to take off some of those extra bits there on the stem so they're not below the waterline. And then I'll tuck that in as well, just on the right hand side. So I'm just working my way around the arrangement, seeing what looks nice where. And it's sometimes good to just stop at this halfway stage and see what you've got and what bits of the arrangement are still needing something in different areas. So I'll definitely add some more tulips into it, but I think it would be nice to change and put some narcissi in just now and then come back to those tulips a bit later. And the narcissi are gorgeous, they're scented, which is something really nice to have in an arrangement. And at the moment I've got these lovely Winston Churchill and Bridal Crown narcissi that have come out. We've just finished with the cheerfulness in the garden, so they come out earlier and then I get these Bridal Crown and Winston Churchill ones coming out slightly later. And they're all multi stems so you've got lots of lovely flower heads on that one stem. So you'll find that when you cut them that you've got maybe one or two that are fully out but you've got more buds on them. So they'll keep opening in the vase at home, which is really nice. So the main point with this is adding in the narcissi is that they're already cut to size so none of that sap is going to be leaking into this arrangement. And that's really important because you want your vase to last as long as you possibly can to enjoy it at home. 
So so many things that you can add into arrangements as well as the tulips and narcissi and things like mascara are lovely. So I'm just adding in some light blue ones here, Valerie Finis. You get so many different colors of mascara as well. You can get the darker blues, you can get whites, you can now get light pinks as well. Other things that are nice to add into a spring flower arrangement are your hyacinths. Mine are now finished for the season, but if you're making a jar arrangement up in late March or early April, then hyacinths will be in full bloom then and are perfect to add in. And they're really long lasting in a vase and provide that amazing scent as well. So they're a really good option as well. At this stage in May, hellebores are also an option when they've got their mature seed pods on them formed. So you don't want to use hellebores in early spring arrangements because they won't be mature enough and they will wilt. But at this stage, later on in the spring, once they have flowered and the mature seed pod in the center has formed, they will hold up really well in a vase. Unfortunately, I couldn't put any in mind today because of we've had quite a lot of frosts and really cold mornings and that seems to have just taken off a quality on the hellebore flowers slightly this year. So I haven't been using them as much in arrangements, but hopefully they will be better again next year. You might have just seen me popping a fritillaria in there as well. It's my last one for the season actually. It's my token fritillaria I'm putting in this jar. You can see it there on the right hand side. And they are really, really good for adding into arrangements just for something completely different. And you get the snake's head fritillaria ones that you can see there. And you also get alba white ones, which are very pretty too. It's lovely being able to grow lots of different types of tulips in the garden. So my parrots, my fringe, my singles, my doubles. And by having all of these different varieties, which are all very different to look at, it makes a really interesting arrangement. You've not just got one type of tulip in there. You've got all these different kinds to look at, different colors, different textures, looks really good. Same with the narcissi as well different types of narcissi that you can add in and by growing different varieties of narcissi you're covering several weeks of the season you're not just having ones all coming out at once in April you're getting from very early April or late March right through until the middle of May. So my bridal crown and my Winston Churchill narcissi will be finishing by next week but that will be followed by the very last ones which are pheasants eye narcissi for me. And that will have taken me up to the middle of May. And then we'll have to think about whether we want to add to them for next year or whether we want to change where I've got some planted. It certainly worked very well this year having put them back into the lawn again and out of the flower patch. And so those beds are coming on really nicely. The only thing that I've noticed with having them in the lawn is we've had some quite blustery windy weather and they're more exposed down there. And so some of the stems have snapped so you're not getting every single stem as usable quality and um, whereas I think in the flower patch they were grouped much more closely together and held each other up a lot and um, but as they multiply in the lawn I think that they will start to support each other more then and that will mean that there's less of a problem from the wind in the future. So here's just a little look at some of my other spring flower jars and you can see that I'm using different things there. You can see that there is some yellow cheerfulness narcissi in there. But similar again, it has got those fringe bell song tulips, the honeymoon tulips, raspberry leaf foliage in that one. And it's also got a ranunculus tucked in at the back there. That was the first one flowering this year. And in this arrangement here we've got some of that nice purple honesty. We've still got one or two hyacinths. We've got some white and blue and pink hyacinths in there and we have got a hellebore in there as well that we've managed to get that was frost free in the garden. And this is an example here where we've used that lovely Spirea bridal wreath again and it also has some anemones tucked in it. They were the first anemones for the year as well. And again some hellebores. So all these flower jars are examples of what I would put together throughout April and into May, right up to the middle of May. And then the season starts to change and you start to move into having alliums and Hesperus and your first annuals flowering. But for just now, we've still got another week to go, I would say, of the tulips, fairy Lars and Narcissi and the honesty and the mascari before they're over for another year again. It's always difficult to think what time of year is your favorite for arranging flowers for local customers. 
but I think spring has to be really high up there because suddenly after a winter of not being able to arrange any flowers at all and you suddenly have all these really beautiful ones that have come into bloom in the garden they're scented and there's so many different varieties that you can work with putting together some really lovely arrangements for customers so I think maybe spring has to be my winner for my favorite time of year for arranging flowers. So I hope you enjoyed having a look at how I put a jar arrangement together in the springtime. I've also got one about how I put together some summer flowers from last year if you would like to have a look at that as well because it'll not be long till we're at summertime although at the moment it's still very very chilly in the mornings and it really feels like we're quite far away from summer at the moment but I'm sure in a few weeks it will all change and actually I've been quite grateful for those chillier mornings and dull cool days because it means the tulips haven't all come out at once. There's nothing worse than having all the tulips just come out over a few days and you're literally harvesting several times a day. You're going out and trying to catch them at the right time and then you're just overwhelmed with the number of tulips you've got. So it has been quite kind in that way. Although it's stalling the growth of the other flowers, the tulips have just gradually come out and that's meant I've been able to keep on top of them very well this year. So that's been a bonus. So what's coming up in May to look forward to on my YouTube channel? Well, next week I thought that we could maybe talk about succession sewing and this is something that I've learned a a lot about in the last few years. I wasn't doing it at all when I first started flower growing. I didn't know about it. And every year I learn a bit more. And it's very particular to your own circumstances as well. But there are some things that you can look at to help give you a guide as to how to do it. And if you can sew in these little batches, succession sew throughout the whole of that initial part of the growing season, then you should get flowers all the way through to your first frost. So we'll talk about that in a lot more detail next week. And then I'm gonna do another of my mini series looking at individual flowers. And then the next one that's gonna come up is gonna be Nigella, which is one of my top favorite cut flowers to grow. So look out for that in a couple of weeks time. And in the meantime, I'm gonna go and put some of these lovely flowers on the stall and hopefully some customers will enjoy them this weekend.